Hello and welcome to Holdridge's Crusade. Today we're going to go over the introduction to the series. It's going to be a new series we're starting here. And uh, here's Holdridge. I just created him. But uh, we're not going to have any gameplay in this video. Uh, we're just going to go over a uh, Google Doc. <laughs> so uh, There's going to be a uh, setup video after this where we set up the th like three characters I mentioned in here. And then in the third video we will... Uh, start the crusade all right so the purpose of this is to start from nothing on a live server and show the progression uh, i've gotten a few comments at least on my last few videos with the boomer guard uh where you know i have a level one with scepters of destruction and <laughs> full raid gear for Belias, right and it's not really showing a new player experience uh, so that's what we're going to do with this one. Uh, I picked three characters. Uh, we're going to be using a uh, paladin, a druid, and an enchanter. And we're going to have three mercenaries because uh, you get a bonus for a full group and I don't want to box six characters. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show the progression all the way from, from uh, level one uh, all the way to 125. Uh, I say 125, the current cap is 120, but in... Uh, what is it like two months the new expansion will come out and uh, the level cap will increase to 125 so we're gonna go all the way uh it's a trio so it's a more realistic uh you know boxing situation for uh you know a life server right people typically do one to two extra characters you know so it just depends uh some people do six i'm doing six with the boomer guard series it's you know it's a little tedious uh, but we'll kind of go into that here in just a second. But, you know, there, you know, uh, we're going to be able to do group missions. So we'll have it. We'll have a solid tank. We'll have uh, a healer and we'll have crowd control. Uh, both of these cross. So I picked I picked Druid and I picked uh, Enchanter for specific reasons. Uh, Druids can charm animals and Enchanters can charm everything. So what we're going to try to do is get some charming into uh, the way we play. Uh, the Paladin, the last time I did a Paladin up to about 65, 70, he could pretty much heal himself with the Mercenary just fine. Like, there was no issues. So, I, the Druid's there for healing and stuff like that, but uh, I'm going to try to do as much DPS as I can with the Druid and with the Enchanter via charms and uh, whatnot. Uh, and we're going to try to do all the group content we can all the way up to uh, 125. So here's the group composition. I've already created all three characters. So we're going to have Holdridge, a Dwarf Paladin. Uh, I actually changed this to a Wood Elf. And uh, she's a Lava Sioux, I guess. I don't know. I hit random like a million times and I, I got that. Uh, and then Enchanter, she's actually High Elf. And uh, I don't even know how to say that, but it gave me that as a random name. Uh, so there we go, uh, High Elf and Wood Elf. I went with that, kind of have the, you know, the, the Fadar uh, kind of you know, group of characters. Kind of, you know, it is what it is. I, I had already done, have a Gnome Enchanter, uh, and I just didn't want to do a Halfling. So, let's see here, Mercenary. We're going to have a healer, a Dwarf Mercenary. It's going to primary heal probably <laughs> most of the time. I have backup heals here, but... Uh, early on, it's going to primary heal. Early on, a druid cannot heal very well. Uh, it's, so it's just going to be easier to do it that way. And more realistic, I I try to keep a healer mercenary in all my characters. At all times, it gives me res at you know, early levels. And it gives me uh, the 96% res until the druid gets it in the 70 plus. So that'll be nice. Uh, and then we're going to use caster DPS mercenaries. Uh, I hear these suck. Well, I've heard of the, I've heard they're overpowered, and I've heard they suck from different people. So I don't know. We'll see how they go. I typically use melee DPS uh, when I have like a bard and a shaman. So we're gonna try caster DPS because the uh, enchanter eventually will uh, be able to give some A DPS to casters. So the the enchanter will be able to help the druid, and the druid will be able to help everybody else. It's just gonna be a, some nice synergy going on there. And then the paladin uh, will be able to probably self-sustain himself in uh, most of the content we're going to be fighting. But we'll see how that goes. All right, here's the roll matrix. Uh, I, I like to put these in there. You know, the paladin's going to tank. 
We're going to have healer is going to be mercenary and the druid. Snare is going to be the druid. CC is going to be the druid. Uh, movement speed buff, I have so here, right? It's the druid. <laughs> like, you don't know how terrible it is to go, uh, what is it, 51 levels without having any kind of movement speed buff. Uh, it's terrible. That's why I put J boots on all my uh, all my dwarfs or my gnomes in the uh, Boomer Guard series. It's terrible. Uh, but having so and then group so and uh, all that stuff that'll make that occur faster. Uh, druids also get a uh, two minute uh, cellos like buff at uh, I don't remember what level that starts, but I think it's around 85. Uh, that is a short term speed boost for the group. Uh, shamans get the same one. Uh, and then drew, uh, bards get a five minute one. So it's a nice, that's a nice little boon that we'll have there to uh, just move fast without having a bard and all that. Uh, the enchanter will be slowing when necessary. Um, typically, this is not going to happen until like a level 100 plus. I, I don't feel like slows really matter low level, but we are starting with no gear. Uh, and early on, it's going to be rough. We're going to be. Uh, Having to figure that out. Uh, the druid will be able to port us around and stuff like that. Uh, since we are starting from nothing, and uh, we're gonna, I have a pa leveling path in here, but we are going to be deviating from that leveling path. Uh, importing around will help with that and help with getting to uh, certain spots to farm things because we will be farming platinum because I'm not giving them any money. <laughs> Uh, the resurrections, uh, the mercenary will be able to do it mostly, but the druid and paladin will also be able to resurrect. Uh, DPS, uh, the mercenaries are going to be the primary DPS, but the druid and the enchanter will be able to DPS via dots and charms and nukes and stuff like that. So we'll just see how it goes and we'll be playing it out here. I don't know if I'll be able to handle charming two mobs at the same time. Uh, I might go crazy, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so some rules I've, I've put in here. So no power leveling, right? I got some complaints about the, the the last stream series I did with Voxel. Uh, the second I log him on, people are power leveling me. Well, I do appreciate that. Uh, some people don't. Uh, so it will be, you know, this is going to be an offline series on uh, YouTube. So I shouldn't have to worry about that as much. Uh, since when I'm recording, most people won't notice I'm online. So... Uh, we're going to have no buying from the bazaar at all, so we're going to have to uh, self-found all our weapons, all our items. We're starting with, I think, whatever the standard sword here is. Uh, let's open up the inventory. The only thing I am giving them is bags. I haven't done it yet, but uh, I'm moving all my characters from Oakwind and taking their bags and giving them to these guys. Uh, it's just taking me some time to do that. So he's going to start with a short sword. He's got 37 HP. And I skipped the intro quest, so I didn't get level 2. I literally camped out once I created him and then logged back in so I could skip it. So we start at level 1, and uh, yeah, it'll be good. <laughs> uh, we're going to use auto grant. I ha do have a series where I'm not using auto grant, but it eventually it just devolves into me doing Gribble's quests over and over and over on cooldown to get the 100 AA per run. It's just, it's not worth my time anymore. Um, it is what it is. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna allow external buffs, uh, just because you know it, it's it's impossible to avoid at certain places. But um, I'm not gonna be doing what I do with like Tawani, where I sit in uh, where I sit in the uh, oh god, I even forgot the zone name. Uh, the guild lobby. I'm not gonna sit in the guild lobby for like six hours waiting for all the buffs. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, when I play, I play. Uh, if I happen to like die, because that's where I'll be bound. I bound, bound. I'm, I bound all my characters uh, in uh, Gil Lobby, so it's just easier to summon their corpses and stuff like that. It's just so much easier to do things. And if they, you know, get buffs, they get buffs. I don't really care otherwise. I am going to allow uh, crafting combines from other characters, namely Nomergard. Uh He's, you know, pretty much max trade skills almost, and it is beneficial i don't want to level crafting on any other characters it's too tedious <laughs> it's, it is way too tedious to level crafting and uh it's just not fun for me so i am only doing crafting on him for the most part and uh so 
I'll be doing Overseer from level 85 all the way, you know, to the end, right? Uh, I don't think I have any other characters on this account that needs the Overseer experience. Uh, so they, these guys will be getting Overseer experience, but at the same time, they'll be getting trade skill items from the Overseer stuff, because sometimes you get those. Uh, those items will be used to craft uh, specific things for specific things, like uh, in House of Thule, we need the templates uh, to make the first tier 1 armor. Uh, well, guess what? We're going to get trade skill items <laughs> to, from that to craft it. And uh, same with conflagrant armor or whatever else, so on, so on, so on. Uh, so if we get the arm, we get the materials, I'll send them off to Nomagard and he'll send back the item. Uh, so it is it is what it is. I could find someone else to do the combine. I, and, uh, the usable gear is the self-found stuff. The crafted stuff is, you know, we get the materials, we can craft it. I'm not going to waste my time with that stuff. Uh, gold account, uh, obviously. We're going to be playing on Feronavi, my favorite server. Uh, and we're going to be, it's the latest expansion, and we're just going to be going to whatever that is. Uh, they, there will be a fellowship created, so they can teleport around to each other and stuff like that. And uh, we're going to focus on killing undead, but not 100%. So I got some milestones here that I uh, just made up to kind of give us some goals to head towards. So when we hit level 50, I want to go try Vox and Nagafen. Uh, they're like level 60. I think maybe 55 uh, in the AOC instance uh, we could try them open world at 51 50, or 52 like was the old cap right they removed that so he's, they're probably never up anymore so inside the AOC instance we can try uh, to uh, attempt them uh, if not we don't if we can't do it at 50 we'll try again at 60 now I say this because I know how how gear out <laughs> geared out we're gonna be by the time we get to 60 so uh, we should be able to kill the Vox and Nagafin. So we'll, uh, we'll at least give them shots at 50 and 60. If we can't kill them at 60, we'll try again at 65 and so on and so on. Uh, at 75, we're going to do the Epic 1.0s for all three of these characters. The Druid, the uh, Paladin, and the Enchanter. And then at level 90, we're going to do the 1.5 and 2.0s for these characters. Uh, their Epic... Their epics are not that great, uh, but I, you know, just want to do it for the, uh, the video for it. So we'll do that. And then at 115, I want to complete all the, uh, all 115 to 125, right? I want to complete all the, uh, group missions in the later expansions. Uh, these are, some of these are challenging. Some of them are pretty easy, but, uh, they're kind of the end game content, uh, of these expansions. And we're going to try, you know, at, uh, 115, we'll do TOV. At, uh, I think 115, we'll do try COV. If we can't do it, we can't do it. We'll see, we'll do go, we'll go five levels and try again, right? Uh, TOL and NOS are, you know, 120, and then LS will be 125. And I think the new expansion's name's like Laura, Lauren's Song or something like that, uh, based on what you see on EQ Resource. So, there we go. So, this is like a baseline leveling, uh, you know but I'm not gonna really follow this as much as I thought I was going to when I originally started writing this because I wanna show the actual new user experience and going to unrest is probably not in the new user experience, right? Uh, so unrest, lower gawk, howling stones, these are all very, uh, I think when I was originally wrote this out, I was gonna twink him. Uh, like I was like I think the accelerated start like I was some of the other characters I have done And so he had to have a ghoul bane at level one and shit like that. So uh, Since I'm not doing that we're probably gonna go the path of tutorial um, Whatever that next zone is <laughs> I totally forgot the next zone uh, Here, let's look at the map. Oh, man escape tunnel Atlas Northeast Tonica what is the zone that is right after here called? Uh, Brie Wall? Go away. Escape tunnel. Why, why does it just say escape tunnel? <laughs> it doesn't tell me what's next. Uh, uh, what is the zone called? There's a zone that's right after this one. I'm, I'm losing my mind, honestly, I can, that I can't remember it. Uh, southeast of Tonatonica? Where are these zones located? 
Blightfire Moors, High Hold Pass here, Blightfire Moors. That's the second zone. Crescent Reach. All right, Crescent Reach. That's the name of the zone. So Crescent Reach is the uh, is the zone we're probably going to be doing a little leveling in. It's a little bit harder than Unrest, uh, but it's more it's closer one and two. It's a little bit more progress progression, right? Like it's very set in the location of you know like there's. You know level five mobs here level 10 mobs here that kind of thing so we're gonna you know go through some of these uh eventually we'll hit every zone in the game i feel but uh we're gonna do that we're gonna kind of progress that way and make our way to plane of knowledge um we're gonna start in the tutorial uh because i can give them their bags that i'm gonna give them via the shared bank and i don't have to worry about getting them to guild lobby and then getting them back right so I am giving them bags. Uh, I think I mentioned that already. Uh, but we're going to progress our way through. We're going to try to hit undead as we can, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. At 59, the uh, paladin will get slay undead, which will allow him to critical quite significantly against undead. Let's take a look at it real quick. Go ahead and pop auto grant on there. So class slay undead. So at 59... Uh, we're gonna get you know a 2.2 percent chance to deal 680 weapon damage against undead and vampires so uh you'll see that our leveling path will you know be undead but we're going to be doing daily quests and daily uh missions and stuff like that so when those as those pop up like i'll you know i might not do two videos on you know skyfire dailies but uh you know i might do those off camera stuff like that but that's kind of the the path because we will need the uh the weapons and i mean not the weapons the armor that we get from that so by doing the daily quest you get a cloak shoulders and a belt the belt is a haste belt the uh cloak i think is a buff uh extended buff duration and the uh shoulders are mana reduction very key items in the progression of a character especially on live uh, so we will be doing is at 20 uh, is the first one we'll do and all the way to two uh, I think they stop around 100 ish maybe 95 ish so we'll be doing those uh, at least just to get the items to keep them upgraded for us but uh, that'll be kind of a thing we do throughout this and then uh, about 75 you can do the missions from the next guy next to the daily guy in plane of knowledge which will give you bonus experience for doing a group mission since we have a tank we have a healer uh we have crowd control we can do all of the group missions as far as i'm aware at this point there might be some stuff that's going to be difficult but we'll figure out a way to do it all right so this kind of you know this is some like the alternate leveling path if you will <laughs> uh pretty much every zone is just like mapped out with the zones i spent a lot of time looking all this up uh, and then we'll, you know, be doing quests from 110 all the way to uh, 125. Uh, oh, and yeah, here's the armor. Uh, we will be kind of rushing toward, no, this is weapons. Uh, I haven't filled this one out yet, but we will be rushing towards hero. Uh, if we get on here, I believe I have gear. Yeah, so like the gear is going to be pretty much uh, defiant gear from 1 to 80. Mix match with, you know, whatever we find, right? Uh, hero's armor is a uh, achievement we can do at uh, uh, about 75 I think maybe 70 uh, I don't think I can see them yet on this character but they're uh, in here in the uh, hero's journey it's a part of this quest line uh, so we will uh, be trying to get to this armor so this will you know this is probably better than defiant yeah it's better than the best <laughs> defiant uh and then uh paragon is probably like the next step and paragon we i think we can get that about 75 to 80 uh start working towards it it's in the hero's journey and you can see here we get 960 hit points for that gear which if we look at the list here we get all the way to like underfoot tier one and house of thule tier one so it kind of gets us into that point where we can actually do that content because uh from it's what is it this one from uh 
seeds to underfoot, it jumps 300 hit points. <laughs> like, it, the significant jump from those. And underfoot is hard. Uh, so we will be uh, doing what we can. I'm not going to try to, like, stick within, like, expansions. We're going to jump around a lot. And uh, kind of go for, like, what's the best, right? Uh, I've started, like, looking up the weapons. Uh, like, the best weapon we're going to be able to get is a blo blood-soaked claymore. Uh, that'll be the like the final weapon, uh, but it's gonna be kind of hard to get since it's a random drop and we're still found. So <laughs> uh, we might get lucky, but it's that's that's the end goal for our weapon. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna try to do two hander for the uh, the uh, paladin all the way, and then the druid and the chanter don't really matter. Uh, we're gonna have to farm platinum along the way. I got uh, some places knocked down in uh, the older zones. That uh, I'll probably make platinum videos for, uh, showing that so that uh, you know to help out new new players that don't have platinum, right? Um, like uh, one of the things we I, I have currency. I'm trying. I'm gonna probably not use it, but you can buy bags of platinum with your loyalty tokens and stuff like that. Um, I'm probably gonna skip that just to make it a little bit harder, but we'll see how how <laughs> how much effort it. It actually is when we, it comes down to it, but uh, then yeah, then the, all the gear, right? I have every expansion marked out here all the way to 120, a Knight of Shadows tier one, uh, starting at like, uh, let's say Ring of Scale. Uh, there's a tier three for every single set, which is crafted. Uh, we might put some effort into that, but each piece is like 20 to 30,000 platinum. So it gets a little expensive. And if we don't have a lot of platinum, I might try to stick to tier ones until uh, 125, and then worry about upgrading to tier three. We'll just see how we'll see how hard it is, how hard everything is, right? Like uh, having this gear here will make everything previous trivial, right? Like that's a 3,000 hit points more, <laughs> two expansions, and then all the way here is like insane. So. Uh, it'll be pretty good. And then, uh, yeah, Alakazam, EQ resource, definite good resources for looking up items and stuff like that. But there we go. That's that's kind of like the intro to Holder's Crusade. Sorry if it's a long video. Uh, but my goal with this is to show uh, like that experience on how to level up for someone who wants to box, right? Uh, I am going to be doing another series with a solo necromancer. Uh, by solo, I, I, I include a, a mercenary. Like, mercenary is a part of the character at this point to me. Uh, I don't like the word molo. It sounds dumb. But uh, to me, solo is you, whatever you can bring. You can bring a pet. Mercenary is a pet. <laughs> so, uh, but there will be one of those showing, like, the progression of a solo character going through uh, the same thing. It's going to be a self-found series on live. Uh, and we'll go through everything there, and it'll be a little bit different. I mean, it'll be kind of like the Nomagard series, minus me having to do the Hero's Journey stuff constantly, because that stuff was a little a little annoying. But uh, there we go. So uh, that is uh, Holder's Crusade. Uh, the next video to this will be me kind of setting these guys up to get them ready. Uh, I will be using IS Boxer to do the multi-boxing. I can, you know, click between the windows and it repeats whatever key I press. So I'll be getting them all set up and uh, we'll show that. I'll show kind of like how that is. Uh, I won't be showing the IS Boxer setup. Uh, there's an, I have a video for that. It's just a little tedious to uh, go through all that in a, in a video. But for the most part, it's run the wizard, pick your three characters and you're good to go. At least the way I have mine set up. So, uh, but thank you very much for watching and please have a fantastic day.